This is Real Bigfoot Encounters with Reverend Jeff. This week's story comes from us from an anonymous post from August of 2012. It's no secret that for hundreds of years, Native Americans have had interactions with Sasquatch. They're very familiar with the hairy giant that lives in the wilderness. Throughout Native America and North America, Bigfoot is seen as kind of a brother to humans. In Indian culture, the entire natural world, the animals, the plants, the rivers, the stars, it's seen as a family, and Bigfoot is seen as a close relative, their great older brother. A poster from Western Montana wrote an incredible account about various events that had happened while living on an Indian reservation. One event describes how a group of men became traumatized after killing a Bigfoot and burying its body. This is that story. So I want to be up front. I live in Western Montana. The mountains are real, the wilderness is real, and so are the people. I live on a reservation and the population of Native American to white and other is about 50-50. My father is a tribal member and my mother is not. I am therefore a white descendant and have grown up experiencing both sides of the culture. I spent time in the rough neighborhoods and at the white owned ranches and farms. Both whites and Indians have stories that they tell and they rarely tell them because they are so paranormal in nature. Let me tell you about something that people don't talk about here. When my father was born, he was conscious. This is something he would never tell a stranger, but I'm telling you what he told me. He remembers being in a waiting room before birth and surrounded by thousands of babies. Some were deformed, some were sickly, some were black and Asian and other races. And one of them was covered in hair. It's impossible for me to explain this part better than he could, but basically he saw the waiting room for souls coming into this particular area of the world and he was one of the few that were let through. I'm only sharing this detail because as a child I had dreams about the hairy man and his family before I was ever exposed to the concept of Bigfoot. These dreams were frightening and unexplainable and only made sense years later when my father finally related this to me. In my opinion, the hairy man is somehow related to this area in a big way in my ancestors. Having been the first to settle this area, They've had extensive experiences with the hairy men that have been buried under generations of secrecy and tight lips. Sasquatch may be part of my genetic memory as well as my father's and our grandfather's. Years later, as a small boy, he was playing in the living room when he and his many brothers, when one of them burst through the door screaming and crying for my grandmother to come out and make him go away. This was the first time the hairy man had reappeared in my father's life. My uncle, also a child at the time, had seen a Sasquatch in the small garden out back which is tucked next to a small creek. At the time it was surrounded by trees. The Sasquatch was stealing vegetables and he ran off after being sighted. Nobody spoke of this event afterwards, Sasquatch was taken for granted back then anyway, and my grandmother raising a house full of young boys by herself had no desire to encourage them to panic, which they were. As the years went by, my father reached his early 20s and stories had been popping up around the reservation about a wild man breaking into houses and scaring children at night. Indian Town it was called, and the downtown area with government housing etc. is a rough neighborhood that I grew up in myself as a kid. Indian Town was a very tight-lipped place and people didn't speak about these events to anyone but close relatives. The historic church which Indian Town centers around has had many controversies and disturbing stories. At night in Indian Town, someone very large and smelly had been rummaging through garbage and trashing yards. A couple of houses had been broken into and completely trashed. Food from the cupboards was taken, food that a bear or other wild animal wouldn't have been able to access. People couldn't deduce whether it was a wild animal, an alcoholic or a drug addict or just kids causing trouble. This carried on for some years when one family in particular started to be visited by hairy men almost every night. They would come home and see the door was left open, their food taken, and the animals were cowering under the tables and the routine was so familiar that they treated it as common occurrence. Like the family ghost as my father put it, something that's out there that the family just is afraid to acknowledge. They kept their lips tight, but word got around. 
people were getting nervous. Everyone started to lock their doors at night, and this was unheard of during the 70s. Dogs were acting cowardly for no apparent reason. The wild man was having free reign. He was getting bold. He started to break into houses during the middle of the day. Children would see him and flip out. Police were called, meetings were held. The town was becoming more and more shaken up by the presence of this unknown intruder. This is when something incredible happened to the one particular family who was frequented by the hairy man. They had become so lax and accepting of the hairy man's presence that one night, while standing on the porch, the father was yanked off by clear off of his feet in full view of the entire family. They screamed and huddled together and cried while whatever it was fought with him. Dad was pulled off the porch. The sounds of fighting and screaming, with knowing that your father was powerless against whatever it was, it must have been unspeakably traumatic for the kids. They're now grown up like myself, and I wonder to this day how much this affected their lives. The father was gone for days. Whatever it had taken him was carried him off into the night and after a struggle on the porch. There was blood on the grass and the family grabbed neighbors and some men from the community to help recover the father. The men got together and followed the signs of the trails left by whatever it was, drops of blood and signs of something large passing through. They followed this trail all the way to the very creek that my uncle had spotted the Sasquatch at. They followed the creek all night long. When the men returned the next day, they didn't speak a word. The whole group of grown men, not one of them was willing to speak about what happened. They had, however, found the father. They recovered him. He was beaten black and blue all over his entire body. Ribs broken, arms and legs broken. The father was in shock, incoherent, and couldn't speak a word. One of my uncles had gone to see the man and his family in the hospital. There was a fair amount of goodwill being shown to the family that they went through this experience. Nobody knew exactly what happened, only the father was close to death and the family was very shaken up. So my uncle stopped by to pay his respects and saw for himself the father laying in the hospital. His eyes were bulging wide. He was trembling constantly. This man had been beaten badly by something else was wrong with him. He was traumatized. He died that night and to this day Nobody really knows what grabbed him or what really happened in the woods that night. Even now, the men who went on this recovery mission to save him have kept the stories to themselves. Only a select circle, including my father, remembers these incidents. Almost nobody talks about them. I've shared them with you for whatever it's worth. Those men found what took the father that night. They found the hairy man and they killed it. They shot it to death with high-powered rifles and they buried the body. The men who did this feel incredibly guilty. Sasquatch is a matter of fact here. The older generations told us to avoid them and leave them alone. They can most certainly be monsters, and this is one story that corroborates that. Back in the 1970s, there was no desire to be rich and famous for killing a Bigfoot. There were no desires to even talk about Bigfoot. These kind of things were dirty little secrets, especially on reservations. Yes, there were plenty of white kids bumping into Bigfoot and getting in the newspaper, but the Indian community is tight-lipped about this, even still to this day. Harry Man was a dirty little secret, and I'm glad my dad told me this story. To this day, Bigfoot is still sighted in these surrounding mountain ranges, over a dozen times. One of the latest sightings was less than a quarter mile behind my house, at a nearby man-made lake. A Sasquatch was sighted by a retired elementary school principal, who I knew personally. He related to my grandmother in private, and that's the only reason that I know. I hope this was worth the read. Anonymous. Well, folks, there you have it. Yet another incredible real Bigfoot encounter. Being half Native American myself, I grew up with stories of the hairy man that would carry you off if you wandered too far from the camp in the dark. Not all encounters are rainbows and pixie dust. Until next time, I'm Reverend Jeff, and may the Squatch be with you. <laughs>